I have an idea, but I'm going to play it safe and work my nine to five job because I just don't want to get sued. How realistic of a fear is that when you're thinking of an invention idea? It's not. It's it's definitely not when you're that new in the game. Like There are so many things that have to happen and you've got to be way further down the line before you need to even worry about getting sued. And there's lots of ways that you can pre-protect yourself along that route to make sure you you put up a safety net for you so you won't. Hmm. Yeah. I never thought about it that way, Marcus. <laughs> I'd love to learn more. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're, you're right. Hey, when it comes to developing a product and doing new things, a lot of people have the assumption that everyone is staring at them or everyone has them under a microscope. There's a great saying, I'll probably butcher it like I always do, but it's basically, you wouldn't be so worried if you knew how little people thought about you. Right. And it couldn't be more true when you're developing a product to think that I'm going to come out with um, a Snuggie-like device and then someone says, hey, don't you know Snuggie already exists? I'm calling the infringement police on you and there's going to be a man in a black suit knocking on your door in about an hour. Yeah. It, It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, and I think you brought this up in a different uh, different episode. You're like, the truth is nobody's going to sue you for the $100 you have in your bank account. Like, it, it, Maybe when you start getting well into it and, and you start doing that, then that matters. But when you have your idea, you, you, you know, you're doing your prototyping, you're trying to get it out there, you just, just get it out there. Don't let that scare you because there are a million products that have a million products just like them that are out there. And there's plenty of room. For all of that stuff. I mean, unless you're so specific and you're totally stealing this one person's stuff, there is plenty of room for multiple products out there. Absolutely. So can I share a quick story sure. just to kind of give you a little background on my experience with the legalities and how important I really was or mm-hmm. wasn't? Um, I was a good year and a half into selling Torque Strap. So I was on the market. And I got approached by a large company Mm -hmm. and they said, hey, you're infringing on our patent. Stop. (laughs) I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but it was a it was a email. And I said, "Okay." And I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was nervous. I was at my day job and I'm like, hold on, guys, I need a break. I'm getting sued. (laughs) And so I go and read the email. We we believe you're infringing on so and so and such and such. Oh, my gosh, this is it. So I called the guy. He gave me a number. I was careful. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't say more than I had to, but I did want to know what their position was. And their position was, yeah, we have a patent on what you're doing. And we don't think anybody else can can do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm not doing X. I'm doing Y. And he goes, well, how does that work? I said, you're welcome to buy one of my products and find out, <laughs> yeah. but I don't really need to tell you that over right. the phone respectfully. Yeah. And so after outlining a few key differences, one, I explained to him, I think there's arguable differences between what we're doing, but two, he got an understanding that I'm just some guy at his day job mm-hmm. trying to hustle a little evening shift out of the garage And at the end of the day, he decided just to not follow through. So the lesson there was, well, it was scary, but hey, I'm small. I can get away with a lot. Now, moving forward, it taught me that you do have to be aware that people are going to have that mindset that you have something that I want, so I'm going to take it. Or they're going to feel entitled to every little uh, detail around the space that they're in. But it's kind of like the swivelly chair. This the, the guy who built this swivel chair doesn't pay the guy who made the, the stationary chair every time. Things progress. You work around and patents expire and life goes on and this world needs new products. Yeah. So make new products and take advantage of the fact that you're small. Well, little little does that guy know you're going to be a $25 million company next year. That's right. <laughs> you, and so I'm, I'm just quietly waiting <laughs> for the day they come back and I say, well... How much do you want for your company? Yeah, pal? I'm excited for that. But that that's a good point too. Is like, uh, you know, if you if you have a fear and you can work around another product to to add on to it enough or to change it enough, that negates that point. But also, people wonder about, oh, I have a patent or patent pending. People have a lot more stock, and I think patents are very valuable. I and, think, and to be clear, we're not getting into the nuances of patents, no. but it's part of 
being ready to protect yourself. It is. But just know that things that are patent pending as well, they don't have legal authority to sue you until they're granted a patent. And patents take a long time. That gives you a long time to get yourself out there, to establish yourself, to change your product or not change your product. So don't think that somebody says, I have a patent or I'm patent pending, that that should instantly turn you off. I don't, I don't, you don't want to stomp on other people's, uh, you know, ideas and stuff either, but don't deter you from moving forward with yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for the theme of this episode, maybe you'll agree. Let's just pretend we've designed a, a a more safe utility knife. Okay. They're they're always trying to make them safer, retract a different way, what have you. And we think we have a cool design and something that's going to save time and save cut fingers. So obviously you have an idea for a product that could be a little, um, could be a little tacky as far as getting you into trouble because what if you end up cutting people's fingers when you said you weren't going to, so you're a little bit nervous. What's the, what would you say if you really had a good, uh, prototype and you're ready to start pushing this, what would be the first step to protect yourself moving forward? I would say product liability insurance. Well, I mean, we're assuming we're talking just before you're setting up a company and and putting that in stuff, product liability insurance. Ah, (laughs) You could argue set up the LLC or or corp for first. Well, let's say, let's say you're going to make a business of it then. Right. And you want to do that, then definitely setting up an LLC or corporation, whatever that is, and putting that asset into that protects your personal assets from ever being sued. So they take the business side of it, but not your home and whatever else you have. That's definitely always a good idea. Yeah. And full disclaimer, none of this is legal advice. This is a couple guys talking shop about their experience in the field uh, or in the world of inventing rather. But yes, I think it just depends on what direction you're you're gonna go. If you know you're gonna hit the market and sell this thing, Go ahead and set up your LLC or a corp. Both both of them, basically an LLC or a corporation acts as its own person. You have control of that corp and you pull the strings. But at the end of the day, it's that person that's liable for what goes wrong. It's your job as the owner of that corp to separate the business dealings from the personal dealings. Mm-hmm. Don't let the money cross over unless it's a, a bona fide paycheck or a legitimate expense, and don't act in malice as yourself. You know, don't say this is a company that allows me to drive around drunk at night under the um, under the corporate name. No, right. that's not how it works. You're performing duties to the best of your ability in that corporation. And at the end of the day, America's a great country. If you screw up, you get to say, hey, I tried to make a good business, and I screwed up. I can prove that I tried to make a safer product. And I could admit that maybe I fell short. Sure. And and you are separate from that. Well, and to, to add to that, so you can go online and set up your own corps and LLCs. Personally, I didn't want to mess with that. I don't know enough about it. I, I have my tax guy did it for me. And just to give people a general idea, I think it's about 800 bucks. Um, I, you might be able to do it a bit cheaper if you do it yourself, but think it's going to be around 800. Then obviously you have to pay that every year. So make sure you're going to do something with this and not, you know, if you think you're going to be prototyping for three years, don't don't set up a corporation yet because you're going to be paying eight hundred dollars every year plus that stuff. But you know, it's it's definitely. I think beyond that, product liability insurance is a must, especially like for you and for myself who have something that if used improperly or even if used properly and something did happen, somebody could get hurt, right? Yes. And product liability insurance, there are, there are quite a few places out there that do it. I used Next. It was a company called Next. Mm-hmm. They gave me an online quote. You put in all your specifications. Very simple now. Everything's online, right? Mine is about $800 a year. It's not a lot of money. That's not. And that gives me, I think, $2 million of coverage plus some other stuff. Like if if somebody came into the warehouse and stole some of my product, it would protect me from that as well, up to, I think, 100000 And um, I think you're looking probably anywhere from, let's say, around eight hundred. dollars to $1,500 might be a pretty good average to give people Mm -hmm. as far as what they'll pay for product liability insurance, depending on also the size of your company. Mm -hmm. I don't have many sales, right? I'm a a brand new company. So it's not like I have half a million in sales. Right. But what about yourself? Uh, Pretty similar. At the time, I was estimating $80,000 in annual gross sales. Mm -hmm. And so they hooked me up with a probably a little bit beefier policy. 
uh, I think that was upon my request, possibly because I sure. was just kind of nervous. So yeah, I pay a little over fifteen hundred per year. Uh, but to me, it's money well spent. Um, my agents in town, I can sit down with her. So she was kind of a middleman situation where they linked me with a with a, a different true insurance company mm-hmm. and the broker helps to be the liaison. And I'm willing to pay for that service because it's peace of mind. You learn to do whatever things help you sleep well at night. Sure. That's, that's what's most valuable. And also a requirement. Like if you're going to be selling on Amazon and I think I, I don't quote me on the numbers, but if you're going to be making more than $10,000 or something like per that month. per month, then they require you to have this insurance and they, they, you know, it's all laid out. You can read on it exactly what it is today, but I think they want, Two million, one million, two million. It's like two million aggregate, which okay. I don't fully understand, but yeah. that's the buzzword. Yeah. yeah. So just when you're when you're looking for product liability insurance, if you're going to be doing it on something like an Amazon, make sure you read their parameters first. So when you approach the the things, but most of these product uh, like Next and whoever else, they automatically kind of are you going to be selling on Amazon, and then they know exactly what um, the exact amount you need is to to benefit you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it look. It's a very systemized thing. Yep. It's been around forever. Yep. Um, it's very standard process. It's one of the things that when it came up, oh, you need insurance. I'm like, oh, what am I <laughs> gonna do? Who's gonna insure little old me? Yeah. At the end of the day, if you have the cash, just get it done. Yes. Yeah. This is business. Business as usual for many many places. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, product liability insurance. In a nutshell, it covers the things you can't afford to pay for. Yeah. So when so-and-so drops that Harley Davidson, it covers it. When that Harley Davidson lands on his cat, the cat's covered. <laughs> yeah. When it lands on his foot, it's covered. Yeah. Up to, you know, $2 million is the gist of, of the damage that you can, um, the damage you can do on society. Yeah. But, but I'll just, I want to share a real quick story, not necessarily too much about liability, but just don't get ahead of yourself. I said it earlier about like starting a corporation and starting all these things. You get very excited when you start product creating. You you have a good working prototype in front of you. Like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a business and I'm going to make all this money. I, I made that mistake with a different invention I had. And I got super excited. I started the company like right then. And I, you know, there's $800 plus I have to upkeep that. And then I'm going to have to pay $800 the next year. And I, I did a few things where I started spending money before I actually needed to. I never took that invention anywhere. And at the end of the day, it probably cost me about 1500 to two grand worth of money I didn't have to spend. So while you absolutely need these things, um, you know, like the, the LLC and the insurance and stuff, make sure you're not jumping the gun and doing it right when you have that idea thinking, oh, I got to get all this stuff. I got to protect myself. Do it down the line when you know you're going to do something with it. Yeah. And even like patents, a lot of people t- come to me and say, I have an idea, but I got to figure out how to patent it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Yeah. You don't need to worry about patents at all. Yeah. At all. Look, you're in the very, very early stages and your idea is going to shift so many times. And what the patent- patentable aspect of your device is going to come down to is going to be the way something turns yep. or the way something inserts or the way something locks, it's going to come down to a very uh, succinct detail. And for you to slap a patent on it now, people love that phrase, slap a patent on it and get paid. No, for you to slap a patent on it right now, if I had patented my first, you know, what I thought was going to be the winner, I would have wasted $7,000. Yeah. And you can file a provisional patent for, I think it's under $90 now. No, it's it's more. It, it used to be. I think it's like a hundred and twenty. Anyway, okay. it, it's let's just say it's ninety to one hundred and fifty. I forget the exact number, but you can. Yeah, for around a hundred bucks, you can yeah. file a provisional patent, and you can claim patent pending status yeah. for uh, a full year. Right? Yeah, that's correct. So you have a lot of runway. You can even start selling the product under your patent pending status, which you got for a hundred bucks. So. Don't think about slapping a patent on it uh, by any means because you're a long way from there. And that as far as a means of protection, it's it's not very good because people are just going to work around it. They, they are. And that, that brings me to the next. You you came up with a number. It was like 7,000 uh, bucks. I'm, I think, around 8,500 for my patent application. So just for people to get an expectation, patents aren't cheap. And you're going to spend somewhere if you're going to get it done right 
of like seven thousand to ten thousand dollars. It all depends on how um, hardcore your product is and how much goes into it. But the again, this is probably another uh, subject for another time. But patents are based on how broad you can be, and you said it by saying you're probably going to have just one little separate different thing that's going to make your patent valid over maybe another patent, which is why you shouldn't be afraid that another patent exists because you can get one with something slightly different. That's how many products are out there like that. Yeah. So don't be bet- uh, deterred from moving forward. Sure. So, yeah, definitely. So look, you have an idea. You don't want to get sued. Let's say you, for some reason you do get sued. Uh, 90% of the time, you're going to be in the very beginning stages of your business, if you can even call it that yet, if it's even yet a business. So you'll be in the infancy of your business. You're not going to have more than a few thousand dollars in the bank in your business account, let's say. Yep. You can have $500,000 in your personal account. Just fund your business very gently, very slowly, what you need at that time. And that's all your really business is worth. hmm So when you do sell this product to a dozen Facebook friends because you're testing the market and one of them does cut themselves with your uh, improved utility knife sheath retractor system, you can say, hey, I'm like, first of all, from a customer service standpoint, you're going to stop most of these things in their tracks Mm -hmm. with a sincere apology, admitting you did something wrong and giving a refund. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the the three main things people are looking for. Now, in the event that somebody's lawsuit happy, um, okay, you want to go this route? I'm just going to be forthcoming with you. I'm worth about $2,000. <laughs> and you're going to have about eight, eight to $10,000 in legal fees to get this sucker closed. Right. So pick your battles, man. You want to go that route, I feel terrible. But I got to be honest, this is all that the, there is to gain here. And, and I think... Um, you know, people, you hear Sue happy and people are very Sue happy, and especially when there's millions of dollars to be had. I think the average person is pretty uh, self-regulated. Like they're using a, a blade. They get that it's a blade. They've used other blades. They cut themselves. Most likely it's their fault. Mm-hmm. Like unless it's some sort of fatal flaw and like 10 out of 10 people start cutting themselves with your blade, they're not going to come after you. It's not going to be a thing. They're going to take the brunt of that. And it's just don't let those things stop you from moving forward. Yes, definitely. Now, as you do move forward, as you do start to make more money and you are a little bit more worried, you're going to naturally start to protect your assets uh, like anyone would. For example, you're going to realize, hey, I've I've got over 100 unique customers now. I'm, I'm really casting my net out wide. I need to start putting pretty specific safety language on these packages, even mm-hmm. though I'm just throwing them in a Ziploc bag and kind of mailing them by myself uh, per order, whatever. It doesn't take a, a lot of effort to print out uh, a ship a shipping label with legal jargon on it, yeah. slap it on there, and hey, you tried. These are all things that can be argued for or against in court, but the fact is if you showed the foresight to try to protect your customers that carries a lot of weight in court. That's my assumption. I'm not a lawyer. No, but that's, and it's, sometimes it's sad. You, you read a product label and you laugh at it because you're like, that's so stupid. I can't believe they say, you know, this pen, don't throw it in somebody's eye or whatever away it is. from face. It, yeah. But that's probably there because somebody did it and somebody went after them and they're like, okay, well now we have to put this on there. That's a great point is that it doesn't also hurt if you look at products like your product or in that same world, check out to see what their requirements are. Like in my case, uh, I didn't even think about it until a friend brought it up. You know, mine is an anchor for decks, docks, and trailers. It goes in between the gap. You're like, okay, great. What, What could you possibly do with that? A buddy goes, oh, that looks exactly like a rock climbing device. I'd love to use it for rock climbing. I'm like, no, no, no. Don't use it for rock climbing. I'm like, it's not rated. It's not kilonewton, all that stuff. It doesn't have the ratings. It's not meant for that. So it prompted me to be like, okay, not to be used for personal safety or climbing. Because right? we've all read that, right? Of course The you little did. carabiners we play with as kids, not for climbing. Not for climbing. For climbing. Why not? Because those have to be rated and, yeah, climbing. They have to be rated. <laughs> Great joke. That's okay. I could read when I was two, so I don't know about you. <laughs> I still read at a fourth grade level. <laughs> the um, That's it. You know, it's just, if, if you have doubts, definitely when you get to that point, you could have a lawyer look into those things. 
previous to that. Eh. Yeah, right. Don't, don't waste your money. No, you should at one point, yeah. but it's a long ways down. It, it's a long ways down. But yeah, don't be afraid by awkward little things. You're like, if I do this and somebody's going to cut their this and so this is going to happen, you'll never go anywhere with it. Just get mm-hmm. it out there. Let's figure it out. Yeah, don't flatter yourself, honey. Yeah. You're not worth what you think you are. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we all wish that uh, people wanted to sue us like Bezos, but no, we're, we're you're just not worth it at this stage. And hey, that's an awesome thing. Take advantage yeah. of that because the world is your oyster now. Yeah. You, you can, no one's watching you. You can do basically whatever you want in the fact that, it, or in the respect of inventing in your garage or testing out some markets of friends and families and things of that nature, you're just not under a lot of scrutiny. Take yeah. advantage of it. I, I mean, I think that's pretty fair when it comes down to that. So um, kind of wraps up liability. I, I don't know if you can think of anything else you want to add with it. No, I think the main takeaway I wanted for this episode, and yeah. you guys might notice as you listen, we we try to follow chronologically how to go through the process from A to Z of inventing. And occasionally we'll take a break for an episode like this because one of the most important assets to have as an inventor is perseverance Mm -hmm. and liability could be something that could slow people down. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing we want. We want you guys to keep moving forward, to keep thinking, yes, I I can, I'm small. So therefore I'm kind of invincible. Don't let little tiny hang. If I had a nickel for every friend, oh yeah, but I'd get sued. They'd sue me into the stone age. I'd I'd do one, make one slip up and I'm sued for life. No, Uh, I, sorry. It's just, that's not a good enough reason not to start. Yeah, 100%. Well, look, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think we got yeah. this across, and we've yeah. probably said all we really can legally. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, because these are opinions and, and also stuff we've dealt with or had to go through ourselves. Definitely, if, if you need a, a proper legal opinion, get that somewhere other than us. Yeah, for sure. Listen, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I know this was a quick one, but I think it's very important. Keep on pushing, keep on dreaming, keep on inventing because the ideas are out there and we want to see them come to fruition. Please don't forget to like this episode, follow on whatever platform you may be listening on, follow the show, and hey, keep on thinking because, look, we took the punches so that you guys don't have to. That's going to wrap it up. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys on the next